So Sword and Shield have been out for plenty of time now, and we've gotten the chance to soak in all that the game has to offer. The raid battles, shiny hunting, the battle tower, catching all the brand new Pokemon, but the main feature this game brought to the table is the wild area. When this was first announced, everyone was excited. This is a great step in the right direction for the Pokemon franchise. That being said, the wild area definitely isn't perfect. There are plenty of minute things that could be fixed and a few major changes that could be made to improve the wild area in the next Pokemon games. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had endless fun in the wild area. In Sword and Shield, it's jam-packed full of Pokemon to catch, max raid battles to take part in, and most importantly going around in circles endlessly until you get shiny Pokemon. Why do people do this? I will never understand why you waste your life. Anyway, um, the wild area isn't perfect in any way at all, um, nothing ever really is, but today I just wanted to to talk about some of the missteps they took with the wild area and how they could improve it in my opinion. But first, one of the things the wild area did really well was the Pokemon running around. I guess overall Sword and Shield pretty much nailed the wild encounters, but the wild area made it even better. No matter where you go, there were Pokemon everywhere. The area was teeming with life. With different types of weather, different types of Pokemon will appear, and that's honestly one of my favorite parts. I remember for me it was snowing and a bunch of ice types were around, so I caught some and then I came back later and it was sunny and a totally different set of Pokemon were running around. This invites us to catch them all in a way other Pokemon games didn't really. The deeper you get, the stronger the Pokemon get, and that made it feel like an actual adventure. In past games, the weaker Pokemon were on the beginning routes, and you know, other than the wild area, that hasn't really changed, but being there just makes it feel more real. Real. I mean, when you think long and hard about it, it doesn't really make sense that there are only low-level Pokemon in a given area. Some wild Pokemon don't get caught, but they'll still get into battles and they'll level up, and that's why they won't just be level 6 forever. But moving on, the wild area in Sword and Shield was more or less a chance for the game developers to test the waters on this type of idea, and I think it was an overwhelming success. Even the people that thought the game was boring overall enjoyed the wild area. It was the one agreeable part of the game but even I can see that it needs improvement. And I guess we were just talking about the levels, which segues perfectly into my first thing they should fix, the level curve. Don't get me wrong, at the beginning it's really cool how the Pokemon match your level. The strong spawns like this Onyx aren't a ridiculously high level, but still strong enough to wipe through your team. The farther you travel, the stronger the Pokemon get, and that's really awesome because it invites exploration. But once you beat the game and you become champion, I think pretty much everything including the strong spawns are level 60. It all caps out, and in my opinion, that's not great. What happened over the course of my playthrough that caused these Wingles at the meetup spot to get all the way to level 60? It doesn't make sense to me and in like a world building perspective it kind of throws logic out of the window. There should still be Pokemon of all types of levels and honestly I hope in the future they explore maybe even having Pokemon ranging from level 1 all the way to level 100. It would make way more sense in my opinion. The next thing I wanted to touch on was the lack of interesting locations. I mean for an area so vast you'd think there'd be more buildings to explore, but there aren't any and the few notable spots don't really seem to be that memorable. An example I see used a lot is the ruined tower area area that has a ton of the ghost type Pokemon. Pretty much from your very first steps into the wild area, you can see the watchtower, and the trek around the lake while you catch and battle Pokemon is nothing short of suspenseful. But it kind of sucks when you get there and you see all of these awesome ghost type Pokemon roaming around like Duskull, Ghastly, and Drifloon to name a few, and then you finally reach the tower and it's nothing. You can't go inside or explore at all. I get that the focus of the wild area is the different varieties of Pokemon, but I really wish there were more notable locations. I mean, it would have been kind of cool if I could have gone in the tower and explored what was inside, and since I couldn't do it there or in any other place in the wild area, it ended up feeling somewhat empty. However, the emptiness was somewhat subsided by the local multiplayer. When I first entered the wild area, I was surprised because my roommate and I both got in at the same time and we could see each other. This was exciting because in a Pokemon game, we couldn't really play multiplayer in this fashion. The intro link was really cool in black and white, but they instantly removed it in black and white too, and there was wasn't really anything like it afterwards. That being said, I think it was poorly done when transferring to online multiplayer. First off, correct me if I'm wrong, but you always see random players and never get priority to see your friends. I don't really care about all these random people if I'm being honest. And secondly, it gets really laggy when going online, and that's the one caveat of the wild area. 
the local is a blast, but the online multiplayer is kind of lame. So how do they fix it? I mean, if I were the wild area guy, I would make it more interesting by adding more locations. I would fix the level curve because that's a blaring issue, make it more relevant towards the later parts of the games, make the online more oriented to your friends list, and then add in the randoms, and also some much needed graphical touch-ups and I'd be set. The last thing I want to say about the wild area is the scope of it all and what it means for the future. The wild area in and it of itself is amazing in the context of Pokemon, but comparing it to other open world games it definitely falls flat. There simply just isn't much there and they'll need to expand on it for the DLC and beyond and that's the exciting part. This was the first step into the future of Pokemon games. The upcoming Pokemon DLC is going to be entirely open world and from the trailers it looks like there will be actual locations to explore. In future games it's not too uncanny to think they could make an entire Pokemon region in the same style, and that prospect really excites me for the future of the franchise. One day, maybe we'll see a Pokemon game with a world as expansive as Breath of the Wild, and imagine how they'll implement the wild area into the Diamond and Pearl remakes. I honestly just really hope they put their absolute heart and soul into those games, even though that's kind of a Johto thing. Diamond and Pearl is my first set of Pokemon games, and I'm ready to return to Sinnoh in a modern setting, because it's been forever. Overall, the current state of the wild area seems promising in my opinion, and I really think that eventually the wild area won't just be one place in a given Pokemon game and just how the overworld it is. But that being said, I'm gonna wrap it up here for today. Subscribe if you enjoyed this video, we're getting really close to a thousand subscribers and I'm getting anxious for the day we finally hit that milestone. Also, let me know your thoughts on the current state of the wild area and what improvements you'd like to see in the future. Yeah, so I don't really have anything else to add, so with all of that out of the way, my name is Shiny Zoroark, and I bid you adieu. Thank you.